Hello, everybody. We are ready to start. Uh, welcome to this the first session of the second day. I'm Monica Bernardi from the University of Milano Bicocca and a member of the Mons Research Center. And I'm very glad to moderate this specific panel today. We have a lot of speakers uh, uh, with us. The topic uh, is that of uh, uh, the impact uh, that uh, uh, digital platforms uh, are having on cities and communities because we know that platforms are becoming more and more uh, centralized and monopolistic and especially in the tourist panorama they are posing a lot of issues and concerns. Especially the short-term rental platforms actually are opening uh, problems uh, uh, related with the amplification or activation of processes of gentrification Disneyfication, hotelization of our neighborhoods or city centers, and also uh, the, the, the massive spread of this time of platform is also uh, actually impacting on the already uh, strong housing uh, crisis because uh, a lot of housing units uh, actually are uh, switching from the residential uh, housing uh, uh, rental real estate market, sorry, to the hospitality sector. So today we are here with uh, our uh, um, guest to talk about this. Uh, and I want to welcome, first of all, uh, uh, our expert, uh, Mare Cox, uh, uh, from uh, Inside Airbnb. Uh, Mare Cox is also a data activist and technologist and is an expert on uh, short-term uh, rental platform. Then we have uh, Lorenzo Vidal, that he is a researcher in CDOPS, Barcelona Center for International Affairs at the Global Cities Program, and uh, Pablo Rey from uh, Montero 34, expert in data visualization, digital commons, and participation technologies. And then we, uh, we have also three city representatives, uh, Clemens Impel, Impele, sorry, uh, head of Municipal Department uh, 23, Economic Affairs, Labor and Statistics of Vienna City Council, from Barcelona, Laia Grau, Urban Planning Manager, and uh, from the City of Amsterdam, Albert Efting, Senior Policy Advisor on Housing Affairs and also Coordinator of the European City Networks on Short-Term uh, Holiday Rental. So welcome. Uh, we are really happy to have all uh, these experts uh, with, uh, with us today. And uh, actually, we don't have a lot of time, so uh, we go directly to the point. Uh, the point is that uh, this kind of uh, um, uh, platformization inside the tourist panorama is posing a lot of problems. So I want to ask uh, what kind of issues and challenges and risks, in your opinion, uh, we can detect in cities in this sense. And I want to start with the advisor and expert. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's session. Um, so I, I, um, I collect data on Airbnb, and I've been doing that for a number of years. Uh, people are using that data to quantify the impact on housing in cities. Um, and so that's, uh, that's, that's what I, I do. Um, in the last year, I've also been conducting research with cities. Uh, I've been surveying some of the cities in uh, a sharing cities network um, and I've just started to complete the research and I'll be pre presenting it later but one of the findings that I, f I found was that in terms of policy objectives the two top policy objectives of, of cities in terms of short-term rentals were housing affordability and availability so for example converting residential properties into hotels uh, to compete with traditional hospitality providers and the other issue were taxes uh, so to make sure that these these activities were paying taxes. Uh, I'm a housing activist, so I focus on the housing affordability and availability issue. Um, and academic researchers around the world have been uh, proving over and over again in cities that have high housing pressure, that units are being taken off the market and it's been affecting uh, uh, housing costs and also livability issues. Um, so I might just leave it at that and I'll let other people add to that. Yeah, uh, well, <clears throat> one uh, question that's related to these new opportunities to extract rents and the difficulties that local authorities are having in regulating this sector 
I think, is that it gives new life to an old idea, uh, which is this idea of the property-owning democracy, uh, but in a neoliberal guise. We know that the roots of, of liberalism are in a property-owning democracy, that it was only later made more inclusive through suffrage extensions. But if we look at these new notions or these new campaigns, for example, the Airbnb citizen, what are they trying to do? They're trying to create a new form of social and political community that's based around the market-mediated exchanges that the, that the platform enables. Uh, and what kind of top uh, politics are they pursuing? They're pursuing the right to dispose of their property without state intervention. And so the platforms are giving uh, a, a new way, new means to renew this vision uh, of, of politics. And uh, I think what they're doing in cities is uh, kind of making the cleavage between owners and non-owners of property more uh, pronounced. And especially, I think, that uh, for small property owners that um, uh, have found this new business opportunity that they didn't have before, uh, we could say that maybe their political allegiances are moving uh, more towards transnational capital and away from their neighbors and their local authorities. So I think one of the challenges of these platforms is that they create a new political correlation of forces in the city. And uh, in particular, in, uh, in the European context, uh, because of the multi-level uh, governance framework of the EU, what is uh, normally framed as, um, as a local to global standoff, uh, the local authority versus the global tech giant, in the EU, it's taken on uh, continental dimensions because uh, the platforms have gone to the EU arena uh, to try to find a centralized position to kind of jump all the regulatory hurdles at the local level so, they're, so they don't get bogged down in the city-to-city -city close quarter conflicts. And the contentions are around interpreting EU regulations, the services directive, the e-commerce directive, etc. So a lot is happening uh, behind relatively closed doors in EU bodies. And we know that the EU is uh, particularly porous to, to lobbies and quite at a distance from local citizen demands. And cities, I'm sure Albert uh, will talk more about this, uh, cities don't have formal mechani mechanisms to influence decision-making there. They rely more on city networks, informal pressure, etc. So in Europe, a lot of the decisions that have to do with cities are taking place uh, very far away from, from cities. I put the, those two ideas on the table. Thank you. So um, I'm talking from the perspective of uh, also the, like data activist, activist, and we we do organize workshops where we try to put together in the same room uh, decision makers, uh, citizens, and also uh, property owners and talk about data and have the debate based on the data. No? The data that we use from, for example, from Insider B&B that are releasing, so it's so important. That, and that's what the many cities are not having. They are having debates about the situation of short rental tourist platforms, but they do, do not have the data. So even, some cities even deny that there is a problem when they don't have the data. So one of the, 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 um, the challenge for many cities is to, to have this, those data. Some, some cities have, have managed to get information from uh, platforms like Airbnb, but there are other, uh, many other cities that do not have the, those data. And, and, and we need, and, and there are also some other platforms because Airbnb is not the only platform in the, in the, in the room. And, and so this is a multi-level problem because uh, the same dwellings are spread am among very different platforms. And also uh, we talk uh, a lot about uh, data literacy or data alpha, alpha datization because uh, some people center in the global numbers, like for example in Barcelona it's around 20,000 uh, rooms or flats for rent, uh, but the, the important thing is how they are uh, distributed among different neighborhoods, and more important, not only the number, but the ratio between the, the ads and the number of dwellings in the, in the different cities. So we have to have a, a more complex debate and, more, and better numbers than just global numbers. And, and so cities, uh, to be able to do that and to to talk about housing affordability that uh, Lorenzo was talking or are, um, are, are so important. So we, we, and, and that's only the, the first part of the, of the problem, to have access to this information 
to be able to enforce uh, new policies because without that it's like uh, being blind of what what's going on and so that's so important that uh, meanwhile we're using data that from inside Airbnb like Murray was saying to uh, start understanding what's going on yes thank you um, we know now the a little bit more the context and uh, uh, it would be interesting to know how cities uh, are really facing uh, uh, the problem and what kind of challenges because we know that the topic of uh, uh, taxes, uh, that of access to data, uh, that of impact. So what kind of problems your cities are really experiencing uh, today with this kind of platforms? Uh, yes, sure, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, I, I, I um, want to start with the European level because you mentioned it. Um, as I said yesterday, there is a huge process within the European Union at the moment to re-regulate all these topics uh, due to the Digital Services Act, which, which will come uh, by next year, and um, the e-commerce directive, which is from the year 2000. Um, that's funny in itself because the first iPhone was launched in 2007. Yeah? Um, uh, will be out of um, uh, of order then probably, and I, I do not agree that it's clear how the new regulations will be. Um, I'm I'm slightly optimistic that they will be much better than today. Um, and uh, when we had the stakeholder consultation from the Committee of the Regions by September, there was a lobbyist from one of the huge uh, platforms and she said, well, uh, you're always um, talking about yesterday's ideas. And what she meant was the bureaucratic way um, city administrations uh, used to deal with, with, uh, with the topics. And I replied, well, yes, um, we need to, uh, to, uh, to work with the yesterday's ideas due to the fact that we don't have the data. Um, if, we, if we want a modern um, administration, we need the data because then it's easy to have the tax administration and uh, um, the zoning uh, topic and whatever you want to, what you want to solve with, with your city. And due to this fact, um, the data uh, topic is one of the key points in the, in the opinion the Committee of the Region will uh, dope by December. Uh, the other is liability, of course. Uh, what, what is the liability of the platforms? Um, and it is, um, this is a typical problem within the European Union, the enforcement of the law. Because what you mentioned is right. We have a lot of rules in the cities. They are slightly different bet between the cities, but the, the common problem is um, how to enforce the law in, let's say, Ireland or Netherlands or wherever. Um, so um, uh, to come to Vienna, what we did, uh, we have an adoption of our uh, Tourism, uh, Tourism uh, Promotion Act three years ago. And uh, the platforms have two possibilities in Vienna. Um, either they send us the data. The data means the data of the, the flats that are rented out and the names of the persons who own the flats. Um, uh, or they have an agreement with the city of Vienna collecting the tax by themselves but giving us the, the information we need to, to check this. And, and what happened is uh, we found um, uh, 17 platforms in Vienna. Um, uh, 12, from 12 platforms to get the data. Um, with one platform, it's home away, we have an agreement. And the others, well, it's the same like everywhere, it's a law enforcement topic now. Thank you. Uh, okay, in this, in this uh, context that they, they put uh, on the table, uh, in Barcelona we made uh, four uh, instruments to uh, govern uh, the tourism. Uh, in um, 2015, when um, we arrive on the town, we make uh, four instruments. Uh, first one was a tourist uh, accommodation plan. Uh, second one was a shock plan against uh, illegal tourist accommodation. And the third one is, was working, uh, it is make a working table uh, with tourism accommodation platforms. And uh, at the same time, we made a strategic tourist plan. Um, the, the first one, we approved the new urbanistic regulation and the special tourist accommodation plan to ensure the right uh, housing and allow the residents and inhabitants to stay living in the uh, neighborhoods. Plan regulates the implementation of a new tourist accommodation, hotels, hostels and apartments through the city by setting limits by areas, the K, zero growth and limited growth areas and limiting the growth in the number of hotels places in all the city. The plan to control the growth of the offer of the tourist accommodation in the general and especially he made to avoid that any new tourist accommodation is in the place pre-existing normal housing to avoiding the eviction of the inhabitants to the 
inhabitants. This plan has established zero growth for short rentals through the city. The plan was allowed of, sorry, the plan has allowed to different different tables between uh, legal and illegal accommodations. The second plan uh, was the shock plan against illegal tourist accommodation that was launched in July of 2016. In addition to, regula to regulating the le legal activity, it was necessary to do away the illegal activity. The main problem about that was we face in the impunity of advertisement on platforms platforms and the fact they don't include the address of the accommodation. Thus the following measure are implemented. One of that was uh, section measures and the other one was detector measures. The section measures with uh, penalties of individuals and companies that carry on the tourist activity without having the corresponding license as well as the platform that allowed ads to don't incorporate the corresponding license number. In relation to these sections in this platform, it must be said that section of up to 600,000 euros have been imposed. The detection measures, the city council launched a website aimed at both citizens and tourists from which it's called be verified whatever an accommodation with its specific address was legal or illegal and if it's done directly file, a complaint through the same websites. The third instrument we have created was a working table with all these platforms, tourist accommodation in the city. Meanwhile, under the democracy uh, world of sections, we work was bit started with the platform, with a complaint with the regulation, and already establishing the protocol of action of collaborations with them. Currently, are part of this table, Rentalia, Booking, TripAdvisor, HomeAway, and Airbnb. And for the last one, we need to insist on Barcelona that the fact we, does, we don't act in this only sense and uh, we defend of the right to housing and the quality of life of the inhabitants. We have also implemented a strategic tourism plan of the city cooperation and participation of the second sectors and affected organization. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm a, li a little bit short of voice, but um, I'm from Amsterdam. Um, well, there's a lot of have, have been said already. It's always the advantage of being the last in, a, in the panel. Most more, uh, sensible things have been said already. And one of the most important things is, of course, that we have uh, uh, worked together more than we have done in, in the past. And we are now more and more working together. Uh, Vienna is, and, and Amsterdam and, and Brussels and Barcelona are good examples. We are all now in, an, in, in, in different networks, but one of the uh, newest is the European network on short-term holiday rental, uh, which is coordinated at this moment by Amsterdam. And I will talk more about it later this afternoon in a, in a, in a program about collaboration cities. What Amsterdam um, itself is doing is, um, of course, what also Vienna and Barcelona uh, are also doing is um, <coughs> we uh, have put up our in enforcement. That's, it's, it's very important uh, if you make policy uh, that you all also enforce the rules. And that there are I mean, many cities who already have a growing problem, but still don't have the resources to to uh, really implement the law in 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 in, in enforcing it also because that that's very important. What we see, of course, in Amsterdam is like in other cities that an, a rather small city like Amsterdam has already 25,000 listings, about 20,000 from Airbnb, but um, Airbnb has about 80% of the market. So we should not forget that there are other platforms as well. Booking.com and HomeAway are, in, in the in, are in, uh, increasing at the moment. And they also want a little piece of the cake, of course. So you should, we should not forget those. And what is very important is that we now um, uh, are looking for the European Commission, what uh, Claim has already said. There's a new European Commission, a new European Parliament, and I think that, and I agree with uh, Claimants, that things will not stay the same. There's a growing um, uh, knowledge and a growing uh, sense of urgency in, from uh, many European uh, politicians that this 
it cannot go on the way it, it has gone in the past few years, where indeed um, um, uh, global platforms uh, are dictating the market. And, and it's still uh, an effect in this European Commission, European Union, uh, fortunately, that the democratic, democratically elected institution rule uh, uh, has to say about, uh, uh, about the rulings and about how to enforce it and not global platforms who are only, of course, looking for profit. And um, I don't know if we, uh, uh, later on in this uh, debate, uh, are going in more deeply about the effects on cities. Otherwise, I can tell something about that as well, but... Yeah, yes, please. Yes, I, well, uh, what we... I think that the, the, there's a common understanding between all the cities what is happening. And, and what you are seeing is indeed that um, um, uh, neighborhoods, just living neighborhoods where, where people live, are more and more touristificated, in fact. Where there are, it's, it's not that uh, Airbnb is, of course, uh, uh, you, can, you cannot blame Airbnb for everything. Of course, uh, there is a growing uh, interest of tourists to go to cities, and they are all popular all over the world. So it, it, you have to, therefore, you have to separate a little bit the policy on tourism and on housing. We are very much focused nowadays in Amsterdam on housing, uh, and uh, because we say, well, uh, houses are built and are meant to live in for residents and not to use as a, 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 a kind of hotel, a profit-making uh, dwelling, which, which is very interesting, of course, because in Amsterdam, the average uh, price for an Airbnb apartment is at the moment between um, 140 and 200 euros per night. Well, that's uh, easily uh, earned money. If you do that 30 days in a year, it's more than uh, half a year of normal rent. And, um, and if you do it legally. What we have done in Amsterdam, we have um, um, curtailed the business even more. We had a, 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 a cap of 60 days, and it now went down to 30 days uh, last January. And we are now investigating if it's possible to, uh, uh, to, to forbid uh, Airbnb rentals, or let's say holiday, short-term holiday rentals, at all in certain central districts of the city. But it's also... And we have to face that, of course, it's legally challenging because uh, you have to cope with a lot of uh, different rules, not only European rule, but also national law. And, and we are very uh, happy uh, that in, in the Netherlands next year, we will introduce, like in many other countries uh, already did, a registration system, a registration scheme where people <coughs> are obliged to register before they can rent out their apartment. And, and still, of course, we need the data. Uh, and, and that's what we have to work on on the European level. Uh, some uh, uh, cities have made an agreement with Airbnb. We had an agreement, and now it's, it's over. Um, but what the, 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 the main uh, problem is that all those agreements <coughs> are, in fact, voluntary. And that is what we want to change. We, are, we have a lot of obligations, obligations, but they are all directed to the citizens. Um, but we have very few legal obligations against the platforms, on platforms. And that is what we like to change, because if you get data by a, a voluntary agreements, it's nice. But if a platform steps out, it's gone. And, and besides that, there are dozens of platforms, and you want to have them all, not just one Airbnb. We are not anti-Airbnb, although it looks sometimes uh, that it's different because everyone is talking about Airbnb, but we are looking at the, at the whole market. Thank you. And about obligation uh, for platforms instead of obligation for citizen, uh, you mentioned how important it is to work together with other city. And also, uh, for example, Lorenzo before told that cities uh, uh, alone uh, don't have the tools. So that, that, uh, sometimes uh, it's better to find a way to networking with other uh, cities. So, uh, for example, the... <clears throat> the experience of the network, uh, the European network that you coordinated in this sense uh, uh, can be uh, a, a lobby tool uh, in order to achieve some results uh, uh, in this framework. Uh, how many cities are now involved? Uh, there are now about uh, 20. Hmm? Oh. Of course. <laughs>
I thought I have a loud voice, but I don't. Um, uh, there are now about 20, 20 okay. cities. I will talk more about it later, about the network itself. Okay. Uh, there are about uh, 20 cities, and, and, and we have some uh, um, uh, new members uh, the last uh, two months from Italy and from, from Greece. So it's growing. Just to add one, one thing, there is also an official body in the European Union for the regions and the cities with the Committee of the Regions. It's not that important how, like it should be, but if you have an, um, an opinion adopted in the Committee of the Region, you can go with this opinion to the Parliament and to the committee, in this case the IMCO, the, the, uh, the Committee for the Single Market, uh, to bring it to the parliamentarians. And in this special case, we have good luck because um, it's one of the seldom cases where the Committee of the Regions will have an opinion before the debate starts in the European Union. So my um, uh, back to all other cities is in the next 12 months, you will have a lot of flights to Brussels and to talk to your members of the European Parliament and so on, because what happens in the next, let's say, six to eight months to 12 months in Brussels will be the basis for the next 15 to 20 years. So it's very, very important that we get good rules, especially to the data topic, but also to the uh, law enforcement topic and the liability topic um, uh, uh, within the next, I don't know exactly, but by the end of 2020, uh, they want to have the new Digital Service Act ready. Thank you very much. And I want to ask also uh, to cities, since we, uh, you mentioned, for example, that Amsterdam changed some rules uh, to citizens uh, in terms of how many nights can be rent uh, uh, on platforms. I want to ask to other cities uh, what kind of uh, uh, initiatives uh, uh, have already implemented or foreseen to implement in order to, uh, to face this problem. And you also mentioned the uh, actually, m more of them mention uh, uh, the enforcement uh, uh, of law. And we know that uh, there are like the so-called 4E that are necessary to face uh, this problem. That is empowerment of the administration. And uh, we can see that actually cities are trying to find uh, uh, tools to get knowledge and to know how to, to deal with uh, uh, with this topic, uh, but also endorsement of the politics, engagement of citizens and enforcement of the rules. So about this uh, uh, 4E, how cities are uh, moving. Um, well, the, um, uh, as I mentioned, we, we adopted the Vienna uh, Tourism Promotion Act uh, three years ago, four years ago, I'm not, not exactly sure. And um, I think the topics are nearly the same in all the cities, um, as far as I get that. Yeah? We talk to the German cities as well in the network with Amsterdam, and it's always the same problem. You can grab the data, of course. I mean, <laughs> Moore is here, um, uh, but they are not exact uh, at the location um, where the flat is. So the main problem is to find them, um, and if you find them, um, uh, you can, of course, um, enforce the rules in your own city. But if the platform is not willing to agree with the regulations, then you have the problem that you need an international law enforcement within the European Union, or in one case, even outside the European Union, which is a special case. Um, and this is the main problem we do have. Of course, we can't find Airbnb or HomeAway or whatever if they do not obey the rules. But then we have at least two questions. The first one, do we get um, the uh, letter correctly to the post box in Ireland, Netherlands, or whatever. It sounds stupid, but that is one of the main challenges you have as a city. And the second uh, one, then you have the, a court decision, maybe. Yeah? Um, we had a court decision in Munich uh, uh, three months ago, four months ago, which was very interesting. Then we have a second, now Munich has a second round with this uh, thing. By the end, it comes to the, uh, to the European Court of Justice. And the European Court of Justice has different um, decisions in the in the past year. Uh, one is con concerned to Uber. The other one, it was yesterday, was the uh, the dealing in in, in Luxembourg um, uh, is about Airbnb, and no one knows what the court will decide. So what we have is we don't have a law in the European Union on this. We have a lot of decisions by by uh, by courts, and these are not uh, in the not always in the same direction. 
Yeah? So that's why we have a, a huge fragmentation of the single market at the moment. Because every region has its own uh, regulation, then you have a court, the court makes a decision. Even if it makes a decision, the question is if the court says, well, your fine is correct, how to enforce this then in, in, in Ireland? And I asked the question yesterday, and I have no answer yet. What I'm really wondering if one of the platforms, you know, I, I read in the media that they, they got fines by 100,000 and 500,000 and a million euro. And I wonder whether they paid one of the single of these fines. And I don't know that. Well, I think the answer is zero. Yeah. I have not heard of any uh, city uh, that told me, yes, we, we got the fines. That, that, well, well that, we did, but a small one. Yeah, well, you get the fines from citizens, but not from the platforms. You yeah, get from the platform. Well, then that's unique. How much? <laughs> Uh, so I just wanted to add to that because I have a global view uh, outside of the European uh, Union. Uh, uh, I live in the United States and there are some cities there that are effectively regulating Airbnb. Uh, San Francisco is a good example, the home of Airbnb. And, and although I do talk about Airbnb and my activism, as rightly has been pointed out, they're just one of the players. But if you can regulate them, you can regulate other platforms and you shouldn't mention them by name in the regulations. Uh, for example, in, re in San Francisco, they have a 90 day cap. You have to prove that you're a primary resident, so you can only rent out your own home. They have a compulsory registration system. The plat there is a platform agreement that's signed by the city. So the platforms have to follow certain rules. And one of the rules that they have in San Francisco is that <coughs> the platforms cannot a display a, a listing if it's not permitted. Um, and that's been proven in the courts in the US. Uh, other cities have started to follow that. Um, and so you have a responsibility of the host to register and the responsibility of the platforms to only uh, show legal listings. Um, and I think that's the basis for uh, all the cities around the world. Uh, there's obviously a cloud around uh, the legality in Europe. Uh, a good example is uh, the French laws that should be, uh, that are already under uh, debate. For example, Paris fined Airbnb uh, 12 and a half million euros uh, earlier in the year. And that was the subject of court case in France and that was referred to the European Court of Justice. There will be a dec decision coming out soon about that and so I think uh, that's important and then also lobbying in the European Union um, but uh, as part of the French national laws there's provision of data so to the tax authorities which is important to make sure that the platforms are, are paying the, the right tax and, and these are national laws in France but also uh, there's also a monthly data file that's being required to be provided by the platforms to the cities uh, the cities that had adopted a change of use uh, in, in uh, French cities, so for example, uh, Bordeaux and Paris um, have these arrangements to protect housing. Uh, again, uh, the first requests for those data will come uh, in a month's time, and so we, we will see whether platforms obey to that data. If, if this can happen, I think this will be a basis for all European cities, and so I think this is a key it's a key point in, in terms of having platform account, uh, accountability. Otherwise, you get lack of compliance. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to add that. I, I would like to add a, a little bit of other perspective from many cities in Spain that we, where we have made some workshops, like Madrid, Barcelona, uh, Pamplona, and. and and, and San Sebastian, where there are policies that they, they control like for 60 days, 90 days, the number of days they can rent, but uh, cities cannot enforce those policies. Um, and so that's, that's why it's so important that the uh, tenants union, like Sindicato de Inquilinas, like the, that the, these activists that are, they, they, want, they, they know that some things are going on in the European Union and in the cities, but they, they see that the rental market is every time smaller and, and the prices rise and they, they need to take action. So that's, that's, that's why it's so important to, meanwhile, to, to get access to those data and to start uh, having a debate and, and mobilizations. 
And I, we know that the uh, National Institute of, Stati of Statistics in Spain is planning to publish some data about uh, short-term rentals, but always they will be in a, not in an aggregated form, like how many rentals are per, per city. And that's not enough, I mean, because we need a specific, not, maybe not the specific location, but per neighborhood, per district, or per whatever. We need those uh, special data. Also, we know that the tax office in Spain has those data that we were mentioning. And they maybe they will provide them to the National Institute of Stati Statistics, but it's the people that and the uh, association of tenants that are uh, trying to to raise awareness of this this uh, debate and take action. And uh, as we don't have those data, we don't we cannot uh, continue. Yeah. This de this debate is in Eurostat as well at the European level, but it will not help us because we need names and addresses. I've, I mean, I know that there are 8,000 flats in Vienna and you named 20,000, 25,000 in, in Amsterdam and 20,000 in, in Barcelona. And if you ask the colleagues, they exactly will know in which district they are. That's not the problem. We need the name and the address. We, well, we have it from 12 platforms so it's for the city tax, but that's the main problem. I mean, uh, one of the large platforms always argue it's data protection laws. And no, it's not, because uh, if you have to pay a tax, then of course we need the data. Every worker, um, uh, every employed person, uh, the, the data go to the tax offices, of course. Yeah, um, maybe my comment would go more to maybe the battle in political ideas that underpins these measures. Uh, because before I mentioned that these platforms were re renewing this idea of the property owning democracy, but we know that the cities also originated a different kind of politics which is centered around the, the urban inhabitant that uh, claim, derives their claim to citizenship from their use of urban space rather than from property. Um, and whereas the first type of politics uh, demands the right to dispose of property without intervention, the other one demands the right to the city. Um, so I think that local governments need to uh, see in the figure of the urban inhabitant uh, their ally uh, in this in this battle, rather than uh, the property owner, so that that'd be one using the the, the discourse of the right to the city uh, to ally local governments with the social movements that are uh, protesting against Airbnb, and this is precisely the type of discourse that makes um, a city a different political actor in the international arena to other actors such as nation states, uh, and the second question would be uh, to try to change the debate about sovereignty in the EU again because um, behind the, the discourse of uh, well the EU up, upheld, upholds the single market harmonization but it also upholds the principle of subsidiarity the proximity principle the idea that powers should be exercised as close to the citizen as possible so I don't think we should allow a local um, regulatory measures tailored to the different needs of cities to be framed purely as single market uh, disintegration. No, it, it's, something, it's something else. Uh, because behind this uh, harmonization is in fact what is a transfer of, property, uh, of sovereignty to the owners of residential space and, and by extension to the platforms that uh, coordinate them. So in a moment where uh, sovereignty in the EU now is being framed much about uh, a kind of pulse between cosmopolitanism and nationalism, uh, these type of cases allow us to reframe it as a question of, of democracy, no? sovereignty and democracy going together rather than something about uh, protectionism or xenophobia, etc., etc. Thank you very much. Someone want to react to this last uh, uh, insight of Lorenzo? Or if there is someone from the audience that want to take advantage and ask something, please. Thank you. I have a general question uh, that may sound off topic, but I, I wonder if the cities uh, are also uh, a place, and specifically in tourism, where uh, the data analysis and, and, the, and the consequent policies could, could contribute to uh, um, the kind of uh, ecological footprint and, and ecological impact that tourism represents worldwide. I think that your uh, conversation uh, is focusing on, on, on this topic uh, and, and more transversally 
how I can not really imagine it. Eh? So I'm really curious about it, how this contrast of, of data on, on mobility or housing or, or accommodation and other data that, uh, that can be crossed uh, uh, about the, yeah, the ecological footprint of, of tourism could represent uh, yeah, new policies or new advances in, in a more holistic vision of, of the problem. Uh, we have this topic as a question in the opinion for the Committee of the Regions because um, one of the stories already uh, always was told around the sharing economy was that sharing resources um, will be um, a good thing for the environment. I doubt that actually. <laughs> um, but what we have in the in the opinion is uh, to ask the European Commission uh, really to commit to studies about that because you cannot do this with a single city. The question is how many people would stay in a hotel if there is no um, short-term rental, how many wouldn't come, then it's less footprint of course, uh, um, uh, and this is not clear at the moment, so we have it as a question in the opinion. Yes, please. Hi, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for very interesting uh, insights on this topic. Uh, uh, following with what the, the representatives from the city of Amsterdam said about legal challenges posed by short-term uh, uh, rentals in cities that you have very well explained. I was wondering if you could say a little about the political challenges to, uh, in, with regards to the population that you are actually, for whose um, well-being you are managing the city. Um, what about uh, trying to say something about this in the terms of uh, subsidiarity versus uh, sovereignty that Lorenzo actually mentioned here as well. Thank you. Um, I would like to know what specifically you you want to to, to know from me because you say you do talk about sovereignty and uh, subsidiarity, but. If you look at what we are doing in, in Amsterdam, it, of course, official, uh, the official line, of course, is that we do it for our citizens. And uh, our city council is elected by the citizens. And um, what they see and uh, what they face is that their neighborhoods are not the same anymore as a few years ago. That in itself does not have to be uh, uh, the, the biggest problem because there is change always and everywhere. But uh, what, what, you, what you see that uh, people... Um, can't control the environment anymore. If you, have, if, if you have a hotel, you have zoning plans and you give permits, people can uh, go to the, the municipality and object those permits and they have, they, they have saying about what is going on in the zoning plans and um, uh, short-term holiday rental just happens. It, it just happens and, and, and without knowing and without even noticing, uh, before, it, 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 it has happened. Within a year, uh, you, the whole street, the half of your street, can uh, all your apartments around you can be rented out. And there's nothing you can do about it. And that is what, of course, we want to change. You, you can do something about it. You can ob 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 object and, uh, uh, or you can... Uh, call the, the, the city, the city council, uh, or the housing department in, in my case, and, and then we uh, are going to look for it, and we go if, uh, if we're going to look and to, to uh, enforce the rules, and uh, if the, those uh, apartments that are rented out are uh, uh, rented out legally. But that's, of course, it's a, it's a long and difficult process, and we talk about 25,000 apartments, There's, so you know that there is a big chance that if you do it in a clever way, that you can escape the rules quite, um, quite long. Uh, the, the, the fines are, are high, but if you are a professional uh, 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 one, with a professional uh, um, uh, estate manager or, or something like that, then, then, well, the profit may be that high that, that, it, it's, that the fines you can deal with. I must say that the, the, we have stepped up enforcement enormously the last years, that what we see uh, less is that whole dwellings, complete apartment blocks are rented out because it's it now so well known that this is illegal, that people immediately call the, the city and say, well, I have an apartment building there with four or five stocks and they are all tourists. And then we go after it the same day 
and, and then fines can be very hefty. It can be a few hundred thousands euro per apartment building. So uh, we see it less than, than we have seen it before. But what we still see a lot, of course, is that people um, have um, uh, face uh, annoyances of apartments, small apartments being out all, all around them. And that, uh, that's why we kept it at 30 days. In, in this case, less is more. In, uh, we think in Amsterdam. And, uh, well, indeed, what Clemens uh, said and what the, uh, other speakers all, also said, uh, when we talk about data, if you know the right data, it could also be an improv improvement for the platforms. If you know the right data, you can uh, 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 um, make a policy that is really um, uh, detailed on what is happening. And maybe then you can say in certain neighborhoods it's more allowed than in other neighborhoods. But because we don't know the exact data, we, we, we also have to, to, uh, to make general rules like 30 days or 60 or 90 days. And of course, and, and on, uh, more than four persons in an apartment building, there are all kinds of rules in different cities. Uh, and, and, and that's of course the problem. They are very reluctant to give any data, but in fact, it's also against their own interest, I think, in the long run. And, 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 and um, what I want to add to is what um, uh, Murray said. In San Francisco, there is now a strict uh, rule about uh, you have to register and, 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 and uh, if uh, platforms don't do it, it uh, if they allow it uh, that you have uh, that you don't register or whatever, then they can get fined. And what you saw in San Francisco was a huge decrease in the number of apartments rented out. But there are, of course, a lot of people who don't want to be uh, registered. We don't want to be known for a tax office, for example. I think that taxes are, for many people, a real danger. Um, even more than I think the uh, housing permit or, or whatever, because it can cost you, of course, uh, tens or hundreds of thousands of uh, tax if you do it on a large scale. So I think that it's very important to have the proper data. And like Clement said, that is what we are working now for at the European Commission to um, uh, to make platforms also uh, responsible for what is happening. Is that uh, answer your question? It was a long story, but. Um, so I just wanted to add to that. So I, I think if you're talking about how do we give uh, the democratic right of the citizen to shape their cities, um, I think uh, we have this situation where uh, someone that has control of property can arbitrarily turn it into a hotel. And so you're prioritizing the right of that individual homeowner. Um, I think most of the cities have agreed that there is a... Uh, there's a, uh, this is a situation that needs to be regulated, right? So I think you have to accept that, that that's the situation. Uh, most of the cities are representative democracies, so it's coming up with a appropriate policies, getting input from the community. I, I think one of the barriers to that has been data. So what, how can you formulate policy if you don't know what's going on, what, if you can't agree on the impacts, if you have actors manipulating the situation. So I think you have to have data to understand what the actual impacts are. Are they in certain neighborhoods? What type of properties do they impact? Um, I, I mean, it's, it's really interesting here that there's no community activist in this panel. So there's a concentration of power, of opinion. When you're talking about lobbying, that's the same thing. You've got special interests, whether they're the city interests, uh, whether you've got grassroots or uh, Astro turf organizations, uh, so I think that's important uh, to understand. Um, so I, I think uh, data is important, uh, participation from the community, uh, understanding that regulation is required, um, and uh, and and have uh, and also uh, getting the media interest in in the story and uh, providing as much interest into the media. And I think that will promote uh, a, a vibrant debate and also a regulatory frameworks at the city, regional, country, and in the case of the EU, at the European level. Thank you very much. Last question. Okay. 
So, well, thank you, thank you all for very interesting contributions. I have a question for Laya. And uh, sorry if you guys mentioned something about this, but I think you didn't. That, yeah, I have a question for, for Laya. That I, I read that Airbnb, either Airbnb or one of the uh, associations that Airbnb belongs to, made official complaints against uh, Barcelona, Brussels, Berlin, and Paris at the EU level, and the, the European Commission took those complaints in, and now there is like an official procedure going on, which is very opaque. Like, there is very little information about, about that. So I was wondering whether you could tell us what, what the Barcelona municipality knows, what, and what the possible consequences of that could be. I don't know if I understand it very well, but um, we, are, we, are, we, we have a table uh, working with, uh, with uh, these platforms. Are you talking about that? No, are you asking about that? No, sorry. Yes. Sorry, no, I, I don't know what, nothing about that. I, we have a, um, I think that uh, Eva can respond because it's uh, for my, uh, in my um, um, group, team. Do you want to, please? Sorry. I don't know if this works properly, just to add a little yes. note from my own side. Eva is our, oh. is our uh, women policy uh, from this uh, kind of teams. Uh, sorry, I did not hear the... Okay. Team. Can I, so from, from what I read, um, Airbnb, or I don't, I don't remember if it was Airbnb individually or one of the lobbying organizations or associations it belongs to, made, made a complaint against Barcelona, Brussels, Berlin, and Paris at the EU level. Then the European Commission took in those complaints, and that means that an official procedure is, is launched against the cities, in this case, and, but it's very opaque. It's, there is very, very, very little information about that. I read some reports by the, um, the Corporate uh, Europe Observatory, which is this watchdog about lobbying activities at the EU level, and they found out about this, and they, were, they went to, to talk to the cities, and the cities didn't know anything. So there was an official procedure against them happening, and the cities didn't know about that. They found out when these um, lo lo lobby watchers told them. You talk, yes. oh, sorry. you talk about infringement produced, uh, procedures by the European uh, Commission. The, these are possible and, um, well, there, there, there are talks about an infringe, infringement procedure against Amsterdam as well. Well, I think it's, it's, it's impossible that cities won't know it. It, it, it. Usually it goes via the national states, but then, of course, the city will be uh, informed and then you have to defend yourself. And wh what you need to do is give arguments about why you have uh, uh, installed a, a policy, a certain policy. What they're looking for is arguments. They are not saying you're illegal, but that's, that's, that's up to the courts, to the European Court of Justice. But what they are asked, what they are asked for you is arguments. Why do you have those, these or those rules? And uh, are they, uh, in fact, not in breach with our uh, European rules? And then... In, at, at, the, at the long run, at the end, maybe they will uh, uh, act against the national state and say, well, you are in breach with the service directive or uh, any other directive. But the e-commerce directive, for example. And I know that there are some uh, countries and cities where there are infringement procedures, but I don't know the results yet. There are no results yet, I think. Do you know any results? We solved the, the, the mystery partially. Thank you very much for your insight, for your time. I remember that our speakers, some of them have uh, other um, speech today. Uh, you will present uh, this afternoon? Uh, yes, I will present uh, about the European uh, network. What and, time and where? Uh, that's, I think, at about 12 o'clock. Uh, uh, the, the program is called Collaborating Cities. And, and also at the end of the day, we, uh, uh, there is a presentation of uh, Murray uh, from Inside Airbnb about yes. uh, data in, in, in Europe, which is very interesting as well. Yes. Uh, I, I believe it's in the press room downstairs. Uh, so from, from uh, I think, 2.15 onwards. 
Inclusive a city a space in the other hall, in, in the, at the end of the hall, in the, in the red room. Okay. And we are also having, a, yeah, in the Congress area, yeah, at the other. Can I say, yeah, we are also having, uh, Montreal 34, we will be having one of these screens from 12 to 2, and we will be talking about the different reports we've been doing in those workshops I was mentioning in different cities, and, that the, and we just recently published the one for Barcelona, where we were just looking into this uh, agreement Airbnb and Barcelona had in last, last year, and if it had effect or not. If you want to know the answer, you, you can just come to talk to us. We'll be one of those screens. Thank you very much. You also have to present today? You finish. Okay. Thank you very much to our speakers and thank to the audience. Thank you. Bye.